News Talk 1000 WKDE Alta Vista. News, weather, sports, and information all day long. If credit card processing is important to your business, I can help. I'm Ramonda Davis of First National Bank, and I'm your local e-commerce officer for Merchant Card and other electronic business products. Local means I live in Central Virginia. I'm ready to come see you and respond quickly to what you need. Local means I'm focused just on your business needs. For the latest in electronic payment technology and competitive pricing, contact me, Ramonda Davis, First National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I'm Megan Lucas, Economic Development Director for Alta Vista and host of It's Your Business, the area's new and only talk show on topics such as economic development, urban growth, business expansion, and real estate development. If you work in the Alta Vista Central Virginia economy or if you care at all about the local community, you'll love the fascinating topics and guests on It's Your Business. You'll hear a new show every Saturday morning right here at 9 a.m., so please be sure and tune in. If you should miss it, just go out to the website and enjoy. As the community grows, it's becoming more and more cosmopolitan. The transformation from a good community to a great community makes for a lot of exciting talk. Some of that we're going to have this morning. It's Your Business will explore exciting topics related to Alta Vista and the Metro's future development. We're really proud to have First National Bank, Alta Vista, and Lynchburg's premier commercial bank as a sponsor of It's Your Business. We're thankful to have them in our community for so many years. They're a wonderful community partner, and we'd like to say congratulations on your new your branch getting rebuilt and opened. It's beautiful, and we look forward to having you on the show soon. Before I get into introduce our guest today, I want to go through uh, just some announcements, things that are going on in the area. You know, the Alta Vista Chamber works hard for uh, the, the business community. They work to grow and sustain the businesses and industries in Alta Vista. So uh, they're uh, coordinating a trip to Tuscany in November. And if you're interested in uh, going to Tuscany, and who doesn't, please give the Chamber a call, the Alta Vista Chamber a call, and they can give you the details. It's that time of year when uh, the Chamber coordinates the TGIF, the Thank Goodness It's Fridays events. The first one will be Friday, May 24th, 5.30 to 9 p.m. You need to bring your attitude, your good, positive, Alta Vista attitude, and your friends, and join them for a reason, for a season of fun-filled Friday nights on the lawn at Alta Vista's beautiful Avoca Museum. There'll be food, and live music, and beverages, and lots of great networking for everybody to grow and impact their businesses. The cost is $4 a person, children 12 and under are for free. So don't forget to come out to the Alta Vista Chambers TGI Friday, the first one, May 25th. I'm sorry, the first one, May 24th at 530. Some of you know that I'm new to Alta Vista in Virginia, and I'm certainly new to Uncle Billy's Day Festival. I'm really excited to attend it May 31st and June 1st will be the traditional and historical Uncle Billy's Day Festival here in Alta Vista at English Park. The festivities begin on Friday, May 31st down at English Park from 2 to 11. The official opening ceremony is at 7 p.m. There's a carnival from 5 to 11, craft vendors, food vendors, and the music that night will be Dragonfly. I know it's irrelevant to the show, but I just painted my laundry room Dragonfly orange. On Saturday, June 1st, will be uh, there'll be the vendors, the food vendors, the craft vendors, the amazing car show, which Alta Vista On Track coordinates. And boy, Alta Vista On Track, they do a great job on their fantastic Main Street program. Certainly the carnival will be going again uh, on Saturday. There'll be the Texaco Country Showdown. So whether you've got a good voice or bad voice, come and participate in that event. That'll be a lot of fun. Diamondback will be playing at 2.30, the Imposters at 5, and the Works at 8 p.m. And, of course, you won't want to miss the amazing fireworks display. That'll be about 9.30, depending on when the sun finally goes down. The trade lot uh, will be open Friday and Saturday from 8 a.m. to dark. And there'll be free bus rides on Saturday from 10 a.m. until after the fireworks. And there are no dogs allowed in the park. For more information about, uh, about Uncle Billy's Day, just visit the Alta Vista Chamber of Commerce website. Not to mention Uncle Billy's Days, we'll talk more about it later, but you'll want to make sure you're stretched and warmed up and ready to go for the Uncle Billy's two-miler race on June 8th at 9 a.m. starting at the Alta Vista High School, which is a fun race. You know, two miles, that's easy. You, you, know, you can knock that out in six minutes. So 
make sure you sign up for that race, and it'll be a lot of fun. And we'll be talking to Steve, Jester, and Maria more about that race as they're our wonderful guests on today's show. But you'll want to participate in that. I know I would, but I'll be out of town. What? So... <laughs> So moving on, I want to tell you all about the Habit Duck Race, June 8th in English Park. Join the Habitat for Humanity on June 8th at 10 a.m. They have a fun morning with hundreds of hundreds of toy ducks as they float down the river, racing towards the finish line. You can pur purchase tickets in advance to ensure the chance that your duck will cross the finish line to first, second, first through fifth prize. The first place prize is $250 cash, and all the other prizes get cash as well. Call 434-309-2688 uh, or contact one of the board members for Habitat for, Human for Habitat of Humanity. It's a great program, and we're certainly glad to have them in Campbell County. The uh, Lynchburg Regional Chamber of Commerce, they've got two big things on their schedule. Uh, on May 22nd, they've got a great big business expo, and on the 28th, they've got a small business appreciation breakfast. Uh, for information about what's going on in the Lynchburg business community, call 845-5966. And my final announcement, Alta Vista River Festival presented by the Alta Vista Rotary in English Park. It is on again and scheduled for August. Uh, the cardboard boat races, which I understand were a big hit last year. Cardboard's now available at Steve, Auto, at Steve Farmer Auto Sales. The uh, canoeing, kayak races are going to be there, food vendors, specialty vendors, and kids' activities. For details, go to altavistarotaryclub.com uh, for this information. I'm real excited today to have uh, our guests on the show. We're going to talk about the Alta Vista Area YMCA, which really is a, is a, a wonderful feather in Alta Vista's cap. And it's my pleasure to introduce you all to Steve Jester, who's the... Uh, CEO, czar of the YMCA here uh, in Alta Vista, who's uh, Anne Maria McCracken, who is also the workout and fitness czar for the YMCA. You all, thanks for being here this morning. You're welcome. Well, We're glad thanks, to be here. Thanks for having us. So uh, the YMCA, you know, when I was interviewing in Alta Vista for the, this position of mine, people kept telling me about the Y, and everybody is so proud of our YMCA. I can see why. I'm experiencing it, but tell me, what, what's the story? Well, the, the main thing about the YMCA in, in a town the size of Alta Vista is that uh, from what we gather, we're the, the smallest community in the United States with a YMCA. And all the way back to 1971 when Minnie Lane and Christine Frazier looked around the community and realized that there was no place for children to go swimming and have other activities, they decided that they wanted to develop a program for young people and Minnie Lane was watching TV one night and saw a story about the YMCA, and she came up with the idea that, hey, let's do a YMCA. That's the perfect thing for Alta Vista. And uh, the rest is history. I think it's a fabulous history. It's a beautiful facility. Um, you offer an amazing variety of, of activities, and you've got a really strong child care program. Yes. Let's Tell me a little bit about the child care program. Well, the child care program started back in the early 80s, and then uh, we expanded from uh, preschool to school-age child care, and then we developed a program throughout uh, Campbell County, and so right now we have preschool at the YMCA, school-age child care at the YMCA, and then we have before and after school child care at Yellow Branch School, uh, Tomahawk, Leesville Road, Concord and Rustburg and Gretna. So we have uh, before and after school child care all over Campbell County. And child care is heavily regulated. Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, really, when you, know, when you think about it, how have you all uh, managed to, to be so successful um, and with the regulations and keep up with everything? Well, I, you know, Charlotte Meadows, our director, has been with us for 24 years, okay. and uh, she's well known throughout the state of. Virginia as uh, an excellent child care director and and her uh, keeping up with regulations has been one of her strong suits. We take it very seriously. Uh, you know, regulations are a double-edged sword. On the one hand, we're happy to be regulated to a certain extent and we take a lot of pride in making sure that our program is, is well managed. So Charlotte, Charlotte does a good job of that. Fabulous job. Yeah. And the other thing about child care, I'll throw this in, uh, it's good for business uh, to be able to have a child care program like we have in this community has been an attractive asset as far as people bringing uh, business and industry to Alta Vista. You're right. You're absolutely right. Whenever we, uh, in, in, whenever we are recruiting an industry, 
um, in any community, whether it's Alta Vista or you know any town USA, the industries look look at quality of place, and especially if they're going to relocate employees, they want to know what are the schools like and what's the availability for taking care of their children. Right. And so a strong program, especially like the one we have here um, in Alta Vista, makes really makes all the difference, and it can be the tipping point in some of those decisions. So it's a great facility. Now, were you the, are you the first executive director for the Y? Pretty much the first. They 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 had an interim executive okay. director back in uh, seventy to seventy one, but I came here pretty quick after that, and I've been the only executive director uh, since that since that time. So you have had the the really neat experience of getting a Y established, grow and, and uh, grow growing and watched it grow, helped it grow, and sustaining it throughout the years, right? Yeah, I think that, you know, there, there are a handful of people that have sure. seen every step of the way, but I think to most people it, it's 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 a pretty good story to be able to look back at where we started in the War Memorial Building with an old outdoor swimming pool that we built the new Y over the top of, and then we went into uh, team sports, we went into... Uh, you know, some uh, we had a small weight room in that facility. Mm-hmm. We had a little volleyball court. So we actually built a facility back in 1972. That was our first Y. Then we expanded in, in the mid-'80s with child care and then really took off with our, our wellness programs as we got into the 90s. Every, every trend that happened, whether it was team sports, racquetball, tennis, uh, wellness programs, senior programs, child care programs, we've been able to kind of hitch our wagon to those, those programs. And, and right now, you know, you can't watch television at night without seeing something on the news mm-hmm. about wellness, seniors, right. child care, any of these things. And luckily, the YMCA has all those things. Well, you've got a fabulous wellness program. I know Maria is uh, just dying to get in here and chit-chat about it. So let's talk about the, a little bit about the wellness program. Maria, how long have you been with the Y? Uh, April 2nd of this year, I've been there 21 years, right out of college. That and thought awesome. when I moved here with my husband, who I was engaged to at the time, three to five, pad the resumes, get out uh-huh. and get on. And the town is just such a special town with the way the community looks after each other. And Steve is very family oriented and um, very open to new ideas and uh, flexible schedules. And you come up with an idea, go for it, yeah. run with it. As long as it's uh, in, within the budget and there's some interest, you do it and then report to me and how it goes. So it's a very wonderful atmosphere to mm-hmm. work, very creative atmosphere to mm-hmm. work, as well as raising my two children. They came through the child care program. I have one now that just finished uh, freshman year in college, another one that's finishing up her sophomore year in high school, and they did child care 16 months through seventh grade, and if it wasn't for the child care facility, I don't know what we would do for good quality child care. It was a relief knowing that they were being looked after, that it met licensing, that they took field trips, and that they were in a safe, nurturing environment. Makes all the difference. Absolutely. So let's talk about the wellness program. What sorts of things do you offer? What in the we wellness do? center itself, we can do pre-rehab for anybody that's preparing for surgery. We can do post-rehab once they've been released from physical therapy. Mm-hmm. We can work with athletes, which I do, and some of my staff work with college athletes and high school athletes. We can work with people on balance issues. Mm-hmm. We can work with, on anything that is of issue to you. right? And we have treadmills mm-hmm. and a variety of bicycles and we have ellipticals, and then we have strength training machines, and we have dumbbells and barbells and cables, and then the newest toys to enter the market, stability Mm -hmm. balls, balance balls, medicine balls, tubes and bands. The wellness center can meet the needs of anybody. Uh, Very rarely do I have somebody that walks in the door with a condition that we can't address. We work very closely with Center Health as well as Stanton River Family Physicians as well as Rehab and Associates. So we have this great relationship with different offices and they can come to us, know that their their patients are going to get a very good workout. Um, So, and then with the special populations when it comes to um, pulmonary and cardiac, Central Health comes two days a week, and our members can meet with the nurse and the exercise physiologist in a supervised program and get more supervision uh, based on their needs and direct link to their doctors and nurses with just one phone call. That is fantastic. Very good monitoring system. Is that that indicative to all wise, or is that... 
just indicative. A to lot of wise uh, nationally are going towards a wellness partnership with hospitals. Mm -hmm. I know in our area, the Jamerson Y, Downtown Y, Bedford Y, they do have a partnership mm -hmm. with the doctors' offices. So it is because you're talking about a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. You're trying to meet the needs of the whole person. So, yeah. you know, we'll do, like I said, the pre-rehab, the post, the maintenance, uh, things like that, and the hospital will deal with the yeah. immediate need. So you've been there, did you say 21 years? 21 years. 21 years. What's been the best part um, and, the, and the most exciting challenge of what you've been able to do at the Y? What I like about being at the Y, again, is the fact that if I go to a conference, I go to a workshop, I can come back and say, look, this is where the industry is going. Mm -hmm. The industry for people that are already physically active and want that next step would be the high intensity interval training, the rest based training, yeah. interval training. And we can do that and I can get the equipment and bring that in. Right. Indoor cycling, we can bring that. Yeah. We, we have the bikes to mimic outdoor riding in an indoor climate control facility right. yoga we're doing yoga zumba we've got it yeah uh when we when the industry was going towards medicine balls and stability balls and tubes and bands we were right there right so what is exciting about my job is where i started 21 years ago and where we are today mm -hmm. it's not the same job it has continued to move forward and we are in a town of 35 30 200 people however the Y operates as if it's in a metropolitan mm -hmm. area yeah. and quite often we will get visitors who are literally blown away when they walk in our doors because yeah. they think we're just gonna be a little storefront with two treadmills and a bike and the and the and the bike that has the fan right the yeah the air dye we used to have those <laughs> yeah so, Steve uses it every morning yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well yeah Maria you can see that she's extremely qualified. She brings a yeah. lot to the table. And, you know, one of the things that we like to think about with our why is when somebody comes in and says, well, this is a nice why for Alta Vista. That's not what we want to hear. We want to hear that this is a nice why for anywhere. And with Maria's expertise and then the rest of the staff, mm -hmm. the professional staff, David Tucker with sports, Lori Francis in aquatics, uh, Charlotte Meadows in, in child care, mm -hmm. and, and then Maria, I think the expertise of that we have, you know, makes us stand out as, as a good why for anywhere. Well, I say, I, you know, as I get to go out into the state and continue to meet people and market on behalf of Alta Vista, the, I certainly let everybody know that we have the greatest why mm -hmm. in all of the United States. We have a fabulous why. And I, and, and I want to compliment you, Steve, on what Maria is saying. Not every business and not every industry will, will uh, focus on relevancy. There are businesses and industries that will sit back and say, we're successful, so we're not gonna change it. And the fact that, that you have a team that you allow to always stay relevant and on the cutting edge and looking at the new things um, and, and try new things, all for fitness is fabulous. Speaking of trying new things, um, as silly as the name sounds, Pickleball, which was recently featured in a local newspaper, mm -hmm. and you can see it on YouTube, we're bringing that to the Y. Yeah. We had members who saw it, read about it, asked, we researched it, and said, yeah, this would be a very good fit for our members. Mm -hmm. And pickleball, which is a cross between tennis and ping pong, played on a court, is going to be offered at the Y mm -hmm. at the end of May. Again, moving forward mm -hmm. with that, doing senior adult bus trips, yeah. doing health workshops. Those bus trips are very, amazing. Very, very popular. And yeah. they're not just something to, you know, just down the road. They're doing Nashville, Western Maryland, Biltmore, mm -hmm. um, day trips, with Washington, D.C. Yeah. And then we have luncheons and workshops. And, and then outreach for the community, Megan. We have Bunko people yeah. that come and use our facility, um, bridge players, Mahjong, Campbell County seniors use it for line dancing. Veterans. Yeah. The veterans, veterans hold right. their meeting there. So it is a community facility. Yeah. People use the YMCA. So that, you know, we're, we're really fortunate that we're able to meet the needs of different yep. organizations. Yep clubs, groups, and individuals. It's really a, a breath of fresh air that you're not a closed-minded organization that says, no, that's not our bailiwick, let somebody else do it. Well, and the other thing is, is that we, um, talking about where we need to go with social media, Yeah, 
it's not going anywhere. It's, it's and social media is exploding. So no longer is it just Facebook, but now we have Twitter mm -hmm. and we have LinkedIn and, and we have Tumblr and, and radio YouTube and, and radio. radio. Yeah, that's the social media. Right. How's the YouTube going? Have you no, are you getting going some? Well, I I attach it to one of our. Um, I, I can automatically do YouTube to Facebook and Facebook yep. to YouTube. So it's all automatic. And, you know, we're, we just started about four weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook has 4,000 members on it. Twitter now has 57. YouTube has about 26 people. Mm -hmm. But those YouTube videos go right to our Facebook. Yep. And when they do, we can track it. We get about 200 plus people looking at our yeah. little day in a life at the Y. Yeah. So we're trying to find ways to reach people that are researching out to Vista as a place to retire mm -hmm. or relocate. Uh, they all say, hey, I saw you on the website or I yeah. found you on Facebook and yeah. I did some research. We get quite a few visitors from different parts, obviously, of the United States who yeah. researched the why before they came. I think that's great. I wanted to ask about, um, we were talking, let's see, I had something right on the tip of my tongue, Maria. It wasn't pickleball, although every time you bring it up, I want to eat a pickle. So <laughs> I, I know that's not relevant at all, but it still <laughs> makes me think of pickles. But I think that um, I, you're right about people researching it. I have, you know, we all know that Leesville Lake and Smith Mountain Lake are places where retirees go, and I uh, see people who want to join because they want to use your pool. And that's what I wanted to talk about, membership. Well, the thing about the, the the swimming pool is that we're we're basically the only public pool between Lynchburg and Danville. Right. So you know it was it was interesting when I when we, when I first came here the swimming pool was the kind of the crown jewel mm -hmm. of the YMCA, and then as time went on and we started to develop childcare and wellness and sports and all these mm -hmm. things, it, it's not that we forgot about the pool, but maybe we forgot how important it was. Yeah. Now with uh, with our 800 senior adult members and uh, all the rehab programs and a great aquatic director and, yeah. and Lori Francis, the swimming pool has re, re kind of invented itself as a, as a real important part of, of what the YMCA does. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, there, there are plenty of places that have workout areas, plenty of places that have youth sports, and there are plenty of places that, that even have child care mm -hmm. centers. But to have a Junior Olympic indoor swimming pool in a town of 3,000 people it's is fabulous. a very unique feature. So the YMCA is a membership-driven organization. Mm -hmm. How many members do you have, and what does it cost to be a member? We generally? have 3,000, about 3,100 individual members, and we have about 1,600 units, which would be a family would be, say, four individuals, and it would be one unit. Okay. So we have 3,100 uh, individuals and in 15, 1600 units. And you can join, you can join the Y anytime. Mm -hmm. You can just walk in and plop down the money and you can be a mem member of the Y. And one of the, one of the unique things we do compared to other YMCAs is we offered a tiered membership mm -hmm. so that you can come in the Y and Alta Vista. And if you don't want to include the wellness center, then you can join the track, the swimming pool, the tennis courts okay. and the gym and the racquetball court at a very, very low rate. And then the wellness center is an add-on. Great. So. What is your, uh, when you, if you were to sit back and close your eyes and think about the why, what would be your wish for the future for the why? What would it be? Well, you And money is not an option. Well. <laughs> well. <laughs> don't, don't tell Maria that. When you I'm, think about the future of the Alta Vista YMCA, what would it look like? Uh, when you're talking about wellness and group fitness classes, uh, I think what you're going to see the movement right now. If we had, if money was no object in the right. wellness center, mm -hmm. I'd like to do more training, not using equipment. I'd like more space to be able to move through it, to mm -hmm. do kettlebells mm -hmm. and use ropes and bands and oh, tubes. Yeah. And I'd like the space to move, to do lunges and squats and jog and mm -hmm. sprints. So that CrossFit sort of sort stuff. of like CrossFit because mm -hmm. as as humans we have to be able to move through space right and as we get older we lose that ability because we become uh, inflexible yeah and when we weight train on machines we're in a seated position and we sit too much as yeah. a population so our body loses the ability to move through space so if, if down the road 
I think we're going to see more people using space mm -hmm. to train as opposed to sitting and pushing and pulling in one direction. Right. Um, things like that. And I'd like to see the group fitness program go deeper, mm -hmm. uh, hitting more of the baby boomers. And we're exploring that for mm -hmm. a new fall schedule as well. So yeah, and nice. I, th I think in the aquatics end, you know, Lori would, would love to have a therapy pool, mm -hmm. a lap pool. Uh, mm -hmm. So you'd have one facility that was more, the water's cooler, it's more of a competitive uh, playtime, splash time. And then you have another facility that's significantly warmer for arthritis, for arthritis yeah. and group therapy and exercise and for senior adults. And so, I mean, that comes up periodically. Yeah. What about an outdoor pool? Not going to happen. I, <laughs> Just it, curious. It really doesn't quite fit into it, yeah. our long range, our long range plans. An outdoor pool is difficult, and Lori obviously can explain yeah. this better. Because it's such a short lifespan. You yeah. have um, the end of May yeah. through the beginning of September, and that is a lot of upkeep. And it's yeah. a huge financial commitment for a very short period yeah, of time. No return. Yeah. yeah, there's no return. Well, it's a fabulous why. And uh, before we, I have one other topic I want to talk about that's not related, but I want you guys to weigh in on it. But uh, t let's talk about the two-miler. Oh, okay. I'll be happy. I'll be happy to, about that. I'll that, be happy to do that. Have to talk about oh, the two yeah. Miler. So, so first of all, I don't understand why the Uncle Billy's Day two miler isn't during Uncle Billy's Day. Well, it's a road race, and traffic is very difficult that particular very weekend. Very good point. And so, it, it originally started as a 10k mm -hmm. and a two mile fun run, and we used to do it Uncle Uncle Billy's Day. Mm -hmm. And the 10k with the traffic uh, coming into town mm -hmm. was was just a little too much. You know, we don't want to inconvenience people in the community with our race. So yeah. the two milers, we've been we've moved it to the to the week after Uncle Billy's Day, and it's worked out real well for us. I think it's great. Where can people sign up for it? You can sign up online. You, know, you can get an application online, and you can uh, mail it into the Y. The applications are are at the at the YMCA. What's so the website address? www.altavistayymca.com. Very good. And how about the phone number in case people are listening and want to pick up and call right now? 434-369-9622. Well, I appreciate both of you being on. Of course, I want you to stay at the mic because I'm going to ask you a couple a question. I want you to weigh in. But uh, I really do appreciate both of you being here. And I appreciate your commitment to Alta Vista and your loyalty. You know, to have a fabulous Alta a YMCA with the continuity of the staff that you have really says a lot about your leadership uh, and the way that and, and the, your ability to hire an amazing team, uh, which is which is evident by how long uh, how long they stick around. Maria's great, Charlotte's great. I haven't got to know everybody yet, but I think it's fabulous. And 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 having the Y is really a feather in our cap. And and I'm grateful that you all are here, making it such a great community. So so thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you. One of the things, uh, all of everybody out there listening. Uh, Alta Vista is part of Region 2000. Region 2000 has come out with their uh, comprehensive economic development strategy. And one of the key elements um, of, of the strategy is strengthening the quality of life. And that's, that's really where you come into play uh, with what you do at the Y and the services you provide are so critical and help us as a community be ahead of the game um, with communities that we're competing with. So uh, I want to just real quick, I'm just going to let everybody, listeners know that the the uh, regional, and this is Region 2000's Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy, has five key goals. One is strengthening the workforce education. Uh, two is support, uh, support innovation based on businesses. Three, develop a state-of-the-art infrastructure and high-wage industry clusters. Clusters being like-minded businesses uh, all clustering together, hence the word cluster. And four, of course, is promoting interregional transportation systems. You know, Alta Vista, one of the other things that makes us such a fabulous community is we have our own transportation system. That's huge. It speaks to the heart of Alta Vista. It's really fantastic. <clears throat> do the do members use it? Some, I think. Yeah, I, some of them actually. We have a bus stop right there at, at, the, at the Y. At so. so they'll drop you off. You can work out. And go right across the street yeah. and the bus will pick you up and take you to your next place. Not perfect. And then the last item which I actually started with was the strengthening of quality of life or quality of place. All these things are important to uh, community economic development and what we do. And certainly the Region 2000's Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy uh, includes Alta Vista and what I get to do for the community includes Region 2000. So I think that's that's real important. I was reading the, the Alta Vista Journal and there was an interesting letter to the editor 
that I, I thought I would, I, it was important to community and economic development. And I'm not going to read it, but if you get the journal, uh, Leanne Head, who I don't know, but she wrote a letter about, about residents supporting local restaurants. And what I thought was interesting and the reason I wanted to bring it up is, you know, we do have to support our local restaurants, our local businesses. Um, you know, when I first got here, I remember people wanted to say, hey, you know, I can't wait for you to get a Chick-fil-A or hey, can you bring a Starbucks? We have great food here and we have great coffee. And I want to remind everybody, you know, before you head out of town to get a, get a bite to eat or to grab a cup of coffee, look in Alta Vista first. I don't know about you. Where do you like to eat when you're, when you're out and about in town? I like pizza pie yeah. every Saturday night. I call Donna and yeah. I go get me a pizza and she's expecting me and it's a, it's a ritual. It's in, well, every what Saturday night. What a fabulous night. Piece, piece of pie is. It's unique and, um, and they've got great food. I, I really like their calzones. Maria, how about you? When you eat in town, where do you like to go? El Cazador. Perfect. You know, it's so important to eat locally, to buy locally, and to shop locally. Certainly, none of us can do every single thing we want in our community. Well, and the other thing is, you know, like we're getting ready to do the Uncle Billy's Two Miler. Yeah. And, you know, Subway's involved with us. McDonald's is involved with us. So, you know, we really, these these businesses and restaurants, they support our Little League teams. Yep. They donate money to the Y. Yep. And so they're all, they're very valuable to what we do. Absolutely. And for folks who are thinking, why don't we have X restaurant or Y restaurant? You know, one of the key things when restaurants are looking to locate into a community, they're looking about at, at how well the community supports the restaurants it does have. So really want to encourage everybody, you know, go. we've got some great restaurants. Uh, Steve, Don't forget Perky's. Steve just mentioned some. Absolutely. There's lots <laughs> of great restaurants. I couldn't begin to name them all. Right. Main Street Cafe. That's oh, yeah. where I go for lunch. Subway, lunch Wendy's, place. McDonald's. Um, Granny Peas. And, and we're going to forget somebody, and, and we, we don't want to forget uh, China Walk. But again, I'm not intending to, to name all the restaurants. But the message is, do shop locally. Do support your local restaurants and, and businesses uh, whenever you can. And it just doesn't go to restaurants. And I think um, Leanne had uh, said some nice things in her in her letter. Uh, she brings the point that hey, you got to shop locally, eat local, shop local whenever you can, and and uh, the businesses will appreciate it. And certainly, it improves our tax base. Do you guys have anything to say before we sign off? I would like to just for the people of Alta Vista who grew up in this town or have been here for a better thirty plus years, the YMCA is currently showing Jim Funderburk's. Uh, portraits. That's right. History of Alta Vista, a day in the life in the town, as well as personal portraits that he has taken in the last 40 years. They're currently hanging at the Alta Vista area YMCA's athletic center on the second floor. Please stop by the front desk and somebody will escort you upstairs and show you uh, his extensive body of work. That's amazing. So we encourage uh, anybody in the area that would like to see a little bit of mm -hmm. the Alta Vista history to stop by the Y and take a look at that uh, show before it is taken down. Yeah, it's a fabulous show. Thanks for, for bringing that up, Maria. And also, everybody, you can join the Y uh, and be active. It's critical to a healthy lifestyle. The Y does great things for our community. If you don't feel like being active, I'm sure they'd be happy to take a donation because the YMCA is a nonprofit organization and donations are always accepted. Um, and if you are a product of the Y, if you went through the Y's uh, child development program and perhaps now you uh, are enjoying life and have fond memories of that, you're an alumni. Write a check. Tell, write a story. Tell them how, how they've made a difference in your life. I know uh, already Steve and Marie have made a difference in my life, so I'm grateful to the YMCA. So glad you're here. Our next guest this morning uh, on It's Your Business are Hank Frazier and Heather Reynolds with the Alta Vista Chamber of Commerce. And they have been working so hard to produce the upcoming Uncle Billy's Day Festival. Welcome, Heather and Hank. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks, Megan. Great to be here. We're glad to be here. Any chance to talk about the chamber in the town is okay by us. Absolutely. You know, how long has the Alta Vista Chamber been around? It's not quite sure, but we think sometime in the 20s it's been around in one form or another. Working hard for the business community. Always, and the town. That's fantastic. So how, so we're going to talk about Uncle Billy's Days. Um, I'm new, totally new to Virginia, new to Alta Vista, and I'm really looking forward to Uncle Billy's Day, Uncle Billy's Day Festival. So I have to ask, as the newbie, who is Uncle Billy? 
Uncle Billy was Uncle Billy Lane, and his claim to fame was when he was here, he would go out and solicit farmers to bring their products into town to exchange and to get people into town. And one thing led to another, and that became First Saturday, and then First Saturday and Uncle Billy's Day, which started in 1949, wow. combined, both of them went to trade lot, and each kept growing, so now they're in two different locations with a you know, slightly different venue between mm -hmm. the two. Okay, so when is Uncle Billy's Day Uncle Festival? Billy's What's the correct, is it Uncle Billy's Day, or should I say Uncle Billy's Day Festival? Is there, I don't want to be out of line on the pronunciation of the event. I think everybody will recognize it as Uncle Billy's Day. Okay, so Uncle the Billy's Day. The website had to become Uncle Billy's Day Festival. Okay. Dot com. So when is, so when is Uncle Billy's Day? Uncle Billy's Day is Friday, May 31st to June 1st, all day Saturday and into Saturday night. Yep, so you hear that everybody? It's, 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 it's this upcoming weekend and you want to go ahead and start inviting all your friends, all your family, and start making plans to meet them. At, we're at, it's in English Park, right? Uncle Billy's Day is in English Park. We have first Saturday and having it going on at the same uh -huh. time, and that's in Shreve Park. Okay. Slightly different venue, as was mentioned earlier. Okay. So Shreve Park, first Saturday, is the trade lot. That and is the sorts of things that are going on there are, is just what it, it says, trading. People are trading fruits, vegetables, mason jars. All animals. So, an, ooh, animals, all sorts of things. Yes. And then, but the big event is Uncle Billy's Days, which happens one time, one time a year. Correct. And it's, so it'll be this Friday and Saturday. So when I, grab, when I call on my friends and say we're going to Uncle Billy's Days, what can I bring? Can I bring my lawn chairs, an umbrella? Can I bring a tent? You can bring your lawn chair, bring an umbrella just in case. Um, do not bring dogs and do not bring coolers. Okay, can I bring a tent? Like if I want to put a shade tent up, do you allow, do you allow that? There are tents throughout the park. Most of the crafters are under pop-up tents. Okay. There is a misting tent. If the weather permits it, we have a misting tent available. Yeah. We'll have one available. I so love those. So you can come and let your kids run through it, and you can run to it yeah. if you feel like a kid. Yeah, misting tents. What, that's one of the greatest inventions, especially when you're producing a festival on really hot days. But we've got, we've got a misting tent, but we've got the creek right there. Can people just jump in the creek if they want? Well, there or is do a they? river, and there's a, <laughs> steps down to the river that they can jump in if they, yeah. uh, they're pretty sure they can jump in if they want to, but I think I would go to the misting tent. Would that be better? So what can I do? What can people do when they come to Uncle Billy's Day? What happens on Friday? What happens on Friday? Okay, starting at uh, five o'clock is the carnival. The crafters will be there at two and the food vendors will be there at two setting up for that evening. Mm -hmm. The opening ceremonies start at 7 p.m. So what's the, what's the opening ceremony? What happens there? We have a ribbon cutting. Uh -huh. We'll have all of our sponsors can have representatives that will come and be with us that day, and some of our town officials will be there as well. That is, that, what a great idea, an official ribbon cutting to start the festival. I love that. What sort of, you know, you mentioned food, food vendors. What type of food can I eat while I'm there? I oh, my goodness. We have every food vendor you can possibly imagine. Yeah. We have carnival foods such as cotton candy, funnel cakes, hot dogs, but we also have Japanese gourmet, wow. seafood. Uh, everything that you can imagine this year we have. We have a lot more food vendors. That is great. So let's back up to the carnival. Uh, what kind of rides, what sort of things are going to be available at the carnival? The traditional carnival rides, traditional the Ferris carnival, wheel, all those kinds of things. Spinners. Yes. Anybody that's been before will be familiar with the carnival yeah. because it's the same carnival. But as you mentioned, it's all kinds of different rides and those kind of things, especially for the kids. I think that is wonderful. Will there be any kind of petting zoo or pony rides for the kids as well? Yes, we have a petting zoo and pony rides coming this year. I'm so excited. What can I pet? I don't know. Oh, we don't know what's in the petting zoo the, yet. We don't have the final say yet. Well, so. everybody, you need to come to the petting zoo because I'm betting it's going to be pretty awesome. I... Um, I love the idea. I love the idea of a petting zoo, and it sounds like it's a really kid-friendly event. It's oh, very yes. kid-friendly. Yep. So it's a family-friendly event. Yes. yes. So we've got on Friday. We've got the food vendors. We've got the carnival. What time does the carnival start again? The carnival is there from five to eleven on, it, on, on Friday, uh -huh. and it's there all day Saturday. Is the is the carnival? Do you have to pay to go to go on the rides, or is the whole event open to the public? Carnival, you do have to buy tickets to okay. ride. Okay. But everything else to the to the event is free. No admission. Fantastic. You know, I have a terrible, a funny story, which I hope never happens. So I was um, had this experience with a festival back in Nebraska, and the festival was free and open to the public. 
And, uh, and back there we had this phenomenon called the Pancake Man. And people flocked to the Pancake Man. And there was this woman who felt that because the event was free, that all the vendors were free. And I had to have her physically removed by the police. She was so upset. Because she thought that she was getting free pancakes from the Pancake Man. So it's always, it's always important to let people know that was my lesson learned there. That, hey, it's, it's free and open to the public. But you do have to bring money to pay for the food vendors and some of the amazing crafts. What sort of crafts are we going to get to see? This year we have an amazing array of crafts. Mm -hmm. We have more craft vendors this year than ever. Wonderful. So we're really excited. We have everything from wood crafts to jewelry to goat milk soap. Oh. Um, we have airbrush tattoos. We have artisans coming. So we are really excited about our crafts this year. You know, I'd like to get one of those mustache tattoos, airbrush. That would be kind of fun just for the day. We do yeah. have face painting. That is a great idea. I dare everybody to go out there and get their uh, mustache airbrush tattoo. Now, it'll, it won't last all week. It'll just for the weekend. Um, I don't, we can make it semi-permanent if we I'm need sure, to. I'm sure that the town hall would appreciate me coming to work with a mustache painted on. It's a great <laughs> way to recruit business and industry. There you go. Okay, so what happens? So what, uh, how late does it go on Friday night? Everything, both nights, it goes until 11. Okay. Now, the big thing about Saturday night is there will be a break around 9.30, mm -hmm. quarter to 10, where the band stops playing, and then there are the fireworks. Wonderful. But there are bands. There are bands. So t tell me about the bands. Who are they, and what, when do they start? Okay. On Friday, it's Dragonfly, who's going to be playing from 7 to 11. And what type of music is Dragonfly? Great music. Exactly. Good. It's all great yep. with different venues for okay. each of them. And on Saturday, Don, to start off with the Texaco Country Showdown from 11 to 2, Diamondback 2.30 to 4.30, The Imposters from 5 to 7, and The Works from 8 to 11 p.m. with the aforementioned break for the fireworks. What's the, uh, what's the Texaco Showdown? Well, Katie Country to explain that better than me, but it's local talent competing in a singing, a singing competition. Correct, yeah. yeah, it's not. Is it's not. Is it lip syncing or karaoke, or is it just a, a competition? Oh, this is like full on, full fledged competition. That is fantastic. Yes. That's exciting, and what a great way, what a great draw to bring uh, people from around the region, and of course, we all know families will follow them. So I think that's wonderful. And so then after the Texaco, then you have bands until around 9 or 9.30? Thir no, we have bands until 11. And okay. There will be breaks in between so the sure. bands can take the yeah, stage and change equipment and set up and that kind of thing. But the breaks are not that uh, far in between. It's like... Uh, 30 minutes between some yeah. and an hour between the others, depending on the type of equipment and who has to do what to get it ready to go. Right. What about the fireworks? How long is the fireworks display? Who puts it on? The fireworks um, display, like I said, will, it, it's 930 approximately, and they will be f shot off from the high school football field, so right. we'll have a great view down in English Park. Oh, wonderful. And generally, it lasts 25 to 30 minutes. You'd be great. really surprised for the size town, the fireworks display that's put on. Oh, I can't wait. Now, is it set to music, the fireworks display? No. Okay. No. Okay. No, there's no music, just the sounds of the fireworks oh, going yeah. off. And some of the bigger fireworks, you can almost feel them while the you're sounds of the freedom. Park. Yes. Oh, yeah, that'll be yeah. wonderful. So let's talk about how a festival like this gets put together. Has the Alta Vista Chamber always been coordinating Uncle Billy Days? Uncle Billy's Day? No. Okay, so how long has the Chamber been coordinating it? The Chamber, this will be our third year doing okay. it completely. Okay, great. When the fire department had it before us and they decided to give it up, there was a little overlap there. Mm -hmm. But then the Chamber saw a great opportunity to market the town and to bring mm -hmm. people in to see what a great place we have here. Yeah. So we took it over and have been doing it for the last three years. That is fantastic. Now, the Chamber, what we're missing today, of course, is Patty, who's the executive director. Um, is it just the three of you that coordinated, or do you have a team of volunteers? How do you put, the, what goes into putting Uncle Billy's Day together? We have volunteers, but it's basically the three of us in the office to kind of put it all together. But mm -hmm. with, without volunteers, there's no way in the world we could do it. Absolutely. Do your board members take on roles? Do you divide it up, the event up into sections? And do the board members get engaged? The board members are certainly integral parts of this, and we also have volunteer groups that come in and help. That is fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to be able to uh, get my face painted. I'm going to buy some great jewelry while I'm down there because you have some fun, wonderful crafters, food vendors. It sounds like I'll be able to kind of sounds like a nice uh, international tour a little bit with the Jap Japanese cuisine. It'll be good. And you said that was gourmet. Yes. I can't wait for that. Heather, Heather, how do you go about getting those vendors? 
Well, some of them come year after year, mm -hmm. but this year has been really fun because we have taken a lot of calls from vendors who have heard about Uncle Billy's Day at other festivals. Good. So we're spreading the word, but people are starting to come and ask us about it. So and that's exciting. Yeah, that's what you really, that's really what you want. Right. So it's kid friendly. There's no fee to get in. You just have to bring money and change to, uh, to buy uh, something to eat and drink while you're there. Whatever strikes your face. Exactly. In. Now, do you, uh, how is it funded? How is Uncle Billy's Days funded? Is it Do you have sponsors, or does the chamber just write the check for everything? We do have sponsors, and I'm going to take this time to mention them. Good. Uh, the town of Alta Vista and the chamber both coordinate to do this thing. The town provides us with certain services and Great. some funding, but our real sponsor, our commercial sponsors are Danville Distributing, better known as Budweiser, okay. Central Health, and First National Bank. And we also have Auto Cycle Systems from over by Danville that's a sponsor for oh, us also. Oh, great. Great. That is fantastic. So you mentioned beer. I did. There'll be beer. We can get beer at Uncle Billy's Day? There will be an adult beverage area. Okay. You have to be 21 to come in, and we'll have Budweiser products available. So, I can, so Hank, um, do I need to bring my ID? You need a picture ID to get in. Okay. Yes. And then do you wristband people at that point, or, how, or do you mark them? Or how Here's do you... the way the beer garden will work. It's a fenced-off area within the park itself. You come up to a gate where your ID is checked, and soon as you're 21 and older, mm -hmm. you get a wristband. You come in, you'll purchase a ticket or a couple of tickets to take to the beer tent to get whatever you want yeah. at the beer tent. Then when you're ready to leave, your band will be cut off. Okay, so they don't get to go home with their band. And the, and the beer yeah. area is close to the bands and their restroom facilities within the beer garden itself. Yeah. What's the, um, what's the most difficult uh, part or the biggest challenge to producing a community festival like Uncle Billy's, Uncle Billy's Day? To gather up the volunteers. Yeah. You've well, got to have people that are dedicated, that will want to come and help, that mm -hmm. can spend the time to be there and know what it is that needs to be done and do it. So what are some of the areas where you need and utilize volunteers? We have volunteers in all manner of places. Uh, again, in the beer garden, we have people checking IDs, people taking change, people selling tickets, people mm -hmm. serving the beer, that kind of thing, just within the beer garden itself. Mm -hmm. We need traffic control and EMS and people to clean up and pick up mm -hmm. and make sure all the trash is collected. We like to keep it clean and family friendly. Right. And so you need volunteers to do that. You need volunteers to uh, a set up. Do, do you need volunteers to help set up the vendors? Do, do they, could you, like, can I come help? Do you need help from, from me or? The vendors have been mailed a packet telling mm -hmm. them pretty much what to do. Mm -hmm. But when they arrive, there will be people there to assist them to get to where they're supposed to be mm -hmm. within the park itself. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. And it's not just that. We have an auto, um, a car show going on at that time also. Yeah. Who, who's coordinating the car show? Alta Vista On Track coordinates the car show. That is great. They are, they do a fabulous job. Yes, they do. And what kind of cars? Was just any car? Is it open? Is it a show and shine? or? It is open. Um, we uh, Show and shine, yes. Mm -hmm. um, they open it up pretty much to any classic car. Oh, wonderful. So you will see the finest of fine, but you will also see some comical rides as well. That's even better. So it sounds like there really is something for everybody to enjoy um, at the at Uncle Uncle Billy's Day. I'm sorry, everybody, I have such a difficult time saying it. I want to say Uncle Billy's Day Festival, but Uncle Billy Day, Uncle Billy's Day. So it sounds like a great event, and I'm really excited that you guys are taking the lead and really uh, shaping the event uh, each year. You know, uh, festivals and and, and uh, festivals are critical to communities, and they are they provide tourism, they bring recognition and. Uh, the impact, the overall image of a community, and they bring outside dollars into town. So it's great to market it beyond our borders and celebrate Alta Vista and celebrate our heritage. And I really appreciate the hard work that you all do because it's not easy. And certainly, as much as we love the vendors and we love to shop there and buy there, sometimes they, you know, not everybody is easy to deal with, bands, vendors, um, and volunteers. But uh, I'm glad to, do you have enough volunteers? If people want to volunteer, can they call the chamber? Should they call? If they want to volunteer, we want to find them something to do because all hands will make it much easier on us that weekend. Uh, will you take any age volunteer or, you know, like, is it just 16 and older or... 
We need adults. Okay. Uh, we will utilize some high school kids. I know they'll be parking, ca- not parking cars, but they will man a parking lot where okay. there is some paid parking. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in years past we have had some high schoolers that help pick up trash. Right. But we really need adult volunteers. Fantastic. Okay, everybody. So um, if you want to volunteer for a couple hours or all day even, just give the uh, Alta Vista Chamber a buzz at, at, and that, at the number. 369 369- Six 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 five three six nine six 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 five. So call the Alta Vista Chamber of Commerce to sign up to volunteer, or if you have any questions. And what's the website again? Uncle Billy's Day Festival.com. Uncle Billy's Day Festival.com is the website for people can, to go. And just real quick, uh, let's go over again. You can bring chairs. Yes. yes. Can, uh, no pets are allowed. No pets. Can you bring a cooler? No coolers. No. no coolers are allowed, everyone, because you, you need to purchase items from the vendors that are there. So uh, chairs you can bring. You'll probably want to bring some sunblock. Uh, have an umbrella in your car in case it starts to rain, but it's going to be perfect weather. We all know that. Uh, no coolers allowed. Bring your ID. If you don't have an ID, you're not getting served. And no matter how old you look, uh, if, uh, it doesn't matter if you look older than Moses. You're not getting served. So everybody, make sure if that's your interest, make sure you bring your ID. And uh, Hank, tell us again, who are those sponsors? The sponsors are again are Danville Distributing, better known as Budweiser, Central Health, First National Bank, and Auto Cycle. Fantastic. Is there anything we didn't cover that you want the community to know about Uncle Billy's Day? If you're interested in a Budweiser product. The beer garden is only open from 6 to 9.30 both nights. 6 to 9.30? Oh, 6 to 9.30 both nights? And the event ends at 11? Can I ask why the beer garden closes so early if the bands go to 11.30? That was done at the request of the police department. Which is good. Because they have extra, there will be a lot of uniformed officers there. And to save them some overtime and those kinds of things, we will close the beer garden. The last beer will be poured at 9 o'clock. Okay. And the garden itself closes at 9:30. You cannot take alcohol out of the out of the enclosed area within the park. Okay. Well, that- and Megan, I want to mention the bus. Ooh, we um, got a bus. We ha- our bus is going to be running. I hear it is free to ride oh, back great. and forth. From- oh, the Alta Vista, the Alta yes. Vista bus. Yes. Oh, wonderful. It'll be free rides that'll take you from English Park over to the flea market. But with the construction that we may still have going on in town, that might be important to utilize. And also, you can make stops along the way to do some business in town with our local businesses. Smart, smart, smart. Heather, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, the Alta Vista bus is a great, is really a great gem we have in the community. And that's fantastic that it'll be running that day uh, during the festival. Where can people park, by the way? I didn't think to ask that. Where, wh- how do we get there or where do we park? There what do is we do? parking right inside English Park, but it is limited. So all of the town of Alta Vista is going to mm. be open for parking. So yeah. you want to park one time, get on that bus, do all your business. That is fantastic. So everybody, you uh, you heard it here. Hopefully you've already, you're have already already scheduled and planning to attend the Uncle Billy's Day Festival here in Alta Vista on... Um, May 31st. Thank you. And Saturday, June yeah, 1st. Yeah, Friday, May 31st and Saturday, June 1st. So you should have, uh, you know, have uh, plan it out and make sure you're you're ready to attend. And uh, before I do a run view of the schedule one last time, Hank, Heather, you have anything you want to add? We do have handicap parking available in the park. In so the park. make sure you have your placard or they won't let you in. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. And if you have any questions about anything you've heard today, certainly you can call the chamber at 369-6665. Um, or go on to the website, UncleBilly'sDayFestival.com, um, and, uh, and you can find all this data uh, and more on the website. Just running down the schedule real one last time. On Friday, May 31st, make sure you're at English Park for the official opening ceremonies are at 7, but the carnival starts uh, at 5. The craft and food vendors are open at 2. Uh, there'll be lots to enjoy. Then Dragonfly will be there at 7, uh, playing at 7, 7 p.m., Really, it'll be a wonderful night to be down in English Park. It's such a beautiful park. Then on Saturday, which is June 1st, uh, everything opens up at, uh, at 9, 9 a.m. So come down for breakfast. Heck, bring your running shoes. Do a little jog around English Park. Then grab some breakfast. Uh, you know, after I run three miles, I like to have a funnel cake. 
So oh, why not? Or a corn dog or a funnel cake dipped in the corn dog, um, the uh, sugar powder. But whatever, whatever trips your trigger, you want to be down in English Park to enjoy the craft vendors, the food vendors, the car show, which will be phenomenal. Again, the carnival. I do not recommend running three miles, having a corn dog, then eating a funnel cake and getting on the rides. So you might want to prioritize some of those rides. Some of those rides. The music venue uh, will be from 11 to 2. Of course, we'll have the Texaco Country Showdown, which really is a lot of fun. Followed by Diamondback, the Imposters in the Works for bands, and fireworks will be at nine, approximately 9:30 uh, on Saturday night, June 1st. So I hope to see everybody out at English Park. Uh, if you live in Alta Vista, this is where you want to be. You want to uh, be enjoying uh, summer with your friends and neighbors. And if you're not from Alta Vista, then you need to hop in your car, get on your motorcycle. Uh, hop on your bicycle and come this way and enjoy our wonderful community and make some new friends. Everybody, thanks uh, Thanks for tuning in this morning and listening. I'm Megan Lucas, the Director of Economic Development for the community of Alta Vista. If you uh, like what you heard or don't like what you heard, give me a buzz. My number is 434-369-5001. I'd love to, uh, love to get your feedback and comments. In the meantime, have a great weekend, have a great week, and be sure and uh, stop into the Y and let them know you heard them. Have a good weekend, everyone. With so many changes in taxes, health care, more legislation and bureaucracy, you need someone in the media to keep you ahead of big brother and big government. That's why Herman Cain is on your radio. Big government is not our friend. Herman Cain still speaks for you and for America. Our founding fathers did their job. We must be the defending fathers because life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness will not mean a thing if we do not protect those ideals. Herman Cain knows the inner workings of American business, the economy, government, politics, the Fed, and the IRS. Real life experiences from business, politics, and life. Now you'll hear him every day, coast to coast, on your radio. Listen to Herman Cain every weekday morning from 9 to noon on News Talk 1000.